We're just gonna get started. Come join me, Dawn. I'm coming. Oh, I tried not to be Dawn. How are you? That's right. Fine. That one away. You need to be in both of them. Okay, now you can move over. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Back to the grind. We are back to the grind. It is Tuesday of the new year of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Stephanie Kennedy, and you are? Dawn Silver. And uh, together we're moms. We have seven kids between us. I have four, you have? Three. And um, I started Lazy Parenting uh, about six months ago for the sole purpose, really, of trying to share some ideas, some tips, some tricks with all the moms that we know. We know a lot of moms. We know we do. We know a lot of moms. And to be moms. And to be moms. And so a lot of the stuff that I talk about is kind of geared more to moms of little ones. But I have teenagers and so I still use the same strategies and tactics with my teenagers that I use with my little ones as well. Well, I would think that would be good with consistency. Yes. Very important. It was fun. Yesterday, um, so this week on Lazy Parenting, I'm sharing tips every day all week long about behavior and misbehavior and all of the things that we don't like very much that our children do that drive us insane and drive us nuts. Um, and I just have, have some ideas around it about how I think you can work towards, again, nothing's a quick fix. Like it's not going to happen. You can't change something in a day. No, it's a lot of effort. <laughs> it is. And that's partially why I think some of us fail. Because it takes a lot of effort on our part. It does. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy being a lazy parent. Um, and when I started the lazy parenting idea, it was kind of around this idea that the work I had done with them while they were little has sort of afforded yes. me or allowed me to now be sometimes a pretty lazy parent. Meaning <laughs> I like, when I wrote this, it was back when I was not on all my good health habits. And so it, would be, it was mostly oh. around the whole like sleeping in in the morning because I really, really liked my sleep. Yeah. And it was, I wanted to sleep in. And so did I teach my kids how to get up in the morning and do all the things and get off to school without needing me? Right. And I was like, God, I'm a lazy parent. Yeah. But I'm like, everybody should want to be a lazy parent because it's great. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is to get there. Yeah. Well, for some, for me it was. And now I wake up early anyway, so it's not quite the same thing. Um, but do you do anything for them? No, I still don't do anything. No. Okay, so. so I'm still lazy. So my time is my time. So right. I wake up, um, I didn't today, I was, it didn't work out this morning, but I wake up at six, I do my workout and then I just go to my bedroom and I get ready, right? right. Like I have my shower, I do, sometimes I take my computer upstairs and I do a half hour, like a, a work segment. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Oh, After work. my workout, okay. I take my laptop upstairs and I get in a uh, batch work. So I'll yeah. do a half hour like a time block, yep. that's what I was trying to say, a time block of a task that needs to get done, and then I'll jump in the shower, get ready, and then say goodbye to the kids, and they all go off to school Right. without me having to do anything. And so the lazy parenting idea started around that idea. Yep. We used to joke about that, that, you know, sometimes I feel really lazy, but that should be, that's kind of like the goal. And so a lot of the strategies and tips and tricks that I'm trying to share are trying to help set those set those habits, set those expectations in your family and with your kids early so that you can get there eventually. Right, so that when your daughter, who's going to be in grade 12 next year and university the following, knows how to do these things before she leaves. Yes, so on the blog I have had a bunch of different articles or blogs about different pieces of that, different mm -hmm. components about that. That was one that we talked about. Like, can they do these things? They know how to load the dishwasher, turn the dishwasher on. They do know how to do the laundry. laundry. Do they know how to make their lunches? Do they know how to use the stove? The microwave. And again, it's all age appropriate, right? Depending on what age your children yeah. are. But starting really young. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, Nate asked me because, so I'm not very good at packing my kids' lunch. And I, Riley, my oldest, packs her own, but I pack the boys. And I definitely don't send enough food to school for them. Like, I don't know. They, they probably starve all day long. And um, so yesterday they came home and they were so hungry. So, like, they immediately both got a yogurt tube and then they had 
probably a cookie when I wasn't looking. And then they asked me to make dinner at 3.30 because they were so hungry. And so I had, you know, the Mr. Noodles. And so I was like, oh, I'll just, I'm gonna go shopping tonight. So I, I said, okay, I'll bake you this in a few minutes. So then, of course, I was taking too long because I was working on my computer. And Nate comes up to me, my six-year-old, almost seven, says, I'm gonna go make it myself, Mom. And I was like, oh, you're not. Because, well, he has two stove. And we have a gas stove, so I don't trust. Because I've taught him how to use a gas stove. And his height also, like, he's not. But can it be made with the hot water from a kettle? Oh, that's just, I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it could, yeah. A hack, that was my, like, right. right. But the so stove, right, gas stoves. Yeah. But theoretically, it lights itself. You don't have to yeah. light it, right? Right. So but it does turn face on. is that the, the thing, like, it just... If he's too close to it, like, I don't know what he's going to do. Right. I just never, he's the kid that when he, like, he goes to reach in the oven when it's hot. Like. We only to do that once. And I then know. I won't do it but again. I don't want to deal with the, taking him to the hospital. I still have a scar on my hand from the same idea. I don't know how old I was, but I was making grilled cheese sandwiches. Yeah. Maybe open face, like a tuna melt. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was that. And it was in the oven with the broiler turned on. Yeah. And I went in oh. and my finger touched, touched. the hot yeah. boiler. I remember that. I still remember the smell of my skin burning. burning. And I still have a scar like 40 years later from that. So. Right. Yeah. But I'm yeah. very careful now. I right. don't touch the hot element. It didn't yeah. kill me. The thing with this. So that's a good point. I'm going to talk about some of those things in regards to like. I'm going to talk this week about consequences and punishments and the difference between them and about consequences for behavior. Mm -hmm. But not everything we, like very few things we do as a parent actually is, falls under that realm of mm -hmm. having consequences for behavior. I know you talk to me about sometimes thinking you don't know what the consequence is. And in those cases, often that's not the right strategy then. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you can't think of a, I'm going to talk today about um, relevant consequences, mm -hmm. they have to be linked to the behavior, yeah. that if you as a parent can't think of a related consequence, then that's probably not the right strategy to be using to deal with that behavior. Consequences work best when they can be like directly right. linked to the behavior. If it's something different that you're like, what would be a related consequence, like a natural consequence? Yeah. And if you can't think of one, then likely you need to think in a different way that there's something else that you need to work on. And so the stove one, for mm -hmm. example, like what if they go use the stove and get burnt? Like what's the natural consequence, right? Yeah. So in that case, I would say that what you were just saying about the effort that it takes to parent and to teach them, like that's mm -hmm. the piece is that you need to teach them first yes. of all, how to do it, right? Yeah. Like you can't expect your children and I'm guilty of this a lot. I expect them to do things. And then one of my kids will say, but you've never taught me how, like yeah. it was like, wash the pan. Maybe like, we'll say with Zach or something, right. my 12 year old. Like, why can't you wash the pan after you make your dinner? It's like, well, you've never taught me how to wash a pan. Right. Fair enough. Like yeah. if I haven't taught you how to do the skill and giving you chances to practice it and fail right. and get better yeah. and all of that, then how can I expect you to be doing that behavior? So like with cooking the stove, it might be it's effort, like yeah. showing him how to turn on the stove and then setting rules yeah. around it. Like you're not allowed to use the stove unless I'm home right. and you've asked me for permission. Right. So that if he were to do it, then that privilege would get taken away from him. Yeah. And so the other thing I talked a little bit about yesterday was this word privilege, which is something again that I use in my family quite a lot. And this is if you have little ones starting this kind of language early when they're little, right? Like. Your phone is a privilege to get onto. Yeah. The computer is a privilege. The TV is a privilege that you get to watch the mm -hmm. TV. But how many of us actually use that language when we talk to our kids when no. they're little? We just turn the TV on and let, yeah. them, let them go at it. And so um, this idea around privilege and then uh, these ideas around your rules in your family. So we do often in our family talk about, well, in our family, this is the expectation. So mm -hmm. we don't talk about other people's families. Like... To be a Kennedy, this is what we do. But it's like been ingrained in them since they were right. like three. And so now they're 17. That's a lot easier conversation yeah, to have. That's for sure. Yes, but you're, uh, I can't remember. A lot of work to do the training and. It is. Which is fine because I don't mind because I have time. Because I think the only reason people wouldn't have time is because they're on their own, like self involved. <laughs> doing their own thing, yeah, right? Which, but it is, it's hard to teach them. But that is another little piece. Yeah. Like, are you teaching them how to do what it is you want to do? Mostly, like, yes, I'm pretty good. 
But, but even like, I'm thinking brushing your teeth, like how many of us actually, we brushed our teeth when they're little and then when it's time for them to start brushing your own teeth, have you actually gone and taught them how to do it? And then, and if not, then you get mad later saying, well, you didn't use toothpaste or right. I don't know, like you yeah. didn't, you used too much toothpaste or we didn't teach them how to do it. Well, we, yeah, we've done that for sure because uh, two of my two boys have both ended up in the hospital having to have dental surgery because we're apple juice family. Well, that's different though than so like brushing your teeth. No, but then we've gone in like that. We they know like we have the toothbrushes with the timer on it, and so they know that like we've gone like how to go from the sides, the front, and then underneath and under. And they, like oh, okay. we've like gone through it yeah. because my husband never wants to take them into surgery ever again. Fair enough. Yeah. So it's so yeah we've we've done that lots of both. Whereas I don't think I have. Right. Like I don't think I've actually other than the I because I. I have expected the dentist to do that. Right. But yeah. I haven't actually necessarily, they when they were little, told them how to brush their yeah. teeth, right? So in regards to behaviors and things like that, if we're not teaching them how to do stuff, yeah. then that might be part of the problem. Yeah. Um, we had some an interesting talk yesterday with um, some people DMing us and messaging us and talking about some stri like issues that people are having. Some of the things that were emailed and messaged to me, one of them was around meal time. I had somebody ask me about... That their struggle, their main struggle with their child is around meal time. And I meant to ask her, like, specifically, what does that mean? Because I can see lots of different yeah, issues around same. meal time. But meal time, Oops, sorry. to me, is a pretty, like, depending on what the issue is, and that's where I don't know if well, you have issues Well, it depends on what the age is as well. Because, like, when, um, like, summer, for sure, for all three of my kids, in, when they were younger, was hard. But if I think about it now, like, if they're not in school yet, and then they snack all day, then of course the meal times were hard. Like they didn't want to eat because they've been snacking all day. And same with summer. They, they are, if they just go and grab whatever they want, um, then they're not hungry when it comes to meal time and then they don't want to eat. So mm -hmm. to me, that was an easy one to figure out why are they mm -hmm. not eating. And then there's the other thing, other side is when they just, they haven't been doing that, but they're just not hungry yet. And do you make them finish everything on their plate or not? Uh, my opinion on that is no. Same. So, but I'm going to go back to what you just yeah. said about snacking and eating and just helping themselves. Yeah. So I have a rule in my house, which kind of just happened when they were little. And again, some of the rules I've had, I think have just been beneficial without me me meaning for them to be oh. beneficial. So one of them was they weren't allowed to eat anywhere except in the kitchen. Okay. That was a rule I've always had strictly because I don't want to clean up a mess. Yes anywhere else in the house like if you eat you're sitting at the kitchen table and that was a rule from the moment they were little like we never took food into the family room in yep. front of the tv or we never did that mm -hmm. and so if I was talking to new moms and new parents so some of these habits that become problems later on you might be able to avoid mm -hmm. if you set some of these ground rules like from the beginning right. and so the fact that they never got to eat anywhere except in the kitchen helped with that piece of yep. me not knowing when they were eating or yep. what they were eating. No food. I have a house where the kitchen is downstairs and all the bedrooms are upstairs. Yours is different. Yeah. So in my house as well, no food is allowed upstairs ever. Like there's no food allowed upstairs. It's gone now. We have popcorn in front of the TV or we yeah. have snacks as That's they're older. Though. But it is a mess. Like True. I find cups and bowls and Ugh. all that kind of stuff. So that was one of my rules, which I think had unintended bonuses mm -hmm. by that so the next piece is around snacks like my kids even well no not my 15 year old but my 12 year old they don't necessarily ask me if they can eat they still do though like can I have a piece of chocolate like right now mm. is what I get a lot right Christmas chocolate right because they still have their junk and so can I have a piece of chocolate and I'll say yeah that's fine yeah like and it was more strict when they were younger and now because they've never really abused it, yeah. it's, I don't find it really as a problem that I have to worry about. Like they don't go and binge or anything. Yeah. My older ones don't really ask anymore. Like I have a 17 year old and a 15 year old. No. They don't ask me if they can have a piece of chocolate. But the little ones mm -hmm. have always asked and so they wouldn't just go and grab a yogurt tube out of the fridge yeah. without asking. Yeah. And so then I would know yeah. if they were snacking and then I would know at meal time right. what well, they were allowed to have and not. What they could eat or right. if they're hungry or and not then hungry. For us in our house, not that it's just that like because our TV and stuff is downstairs and our kitchen is upstairs. Like half the time I'm downstairs and they're upstairs by themselves. So like I'll find bowls of like chocolate chips somewhere. Like Nate, my youngest, he's like he'll he'll hoard like marshmallow. Like he'll go for the junk for sure. He is a junk food addict. He's getting better now that he's been in school. Like 
Yeah. yeah. Or and if I catch them. Yeah. But then again, what's a consequence for eating chocolate chips without asking? Oh, well, they don't. They don't get any snacks. Why? Well, yeah, I know. But then you have to hide the food or not have it in the house. Don't right. buy it. Well, I have it just for baking, not right. Because so I then you need to put it want to eat somewhere. Chips. Yeah. Where they can't get it. Yeah, but you know you can reach anywhere on a chair in my house. <laughs> So I would, I am, I hide lots of things in my house, mostly because there's six of us and I will buy myself a treat and if I don't hide it, it's gone. Right. Like I'll go looking for something that I bought myself um, and it's gone because yeah. somebody ate it, like mostly my husband ate it, <laughs> not necessarily the children. Yeah. And I'll be like, well, so we, we've learned to hide yeah. stuff that's important and I tell the kids that too. Like, yeah. You have to hide it. Well, but about the snacks, like I think that's something, yeah. if it bothers you, it doesn't sound like it really bothers you. But if it were to bother you, then my I would work backwards from that and say, like, there is no snacking. Like, if they're not eating their meal, yeah. then there is no snacks before mealtime. Like, going back to old school. Absolutely. Where we were. Because our kids, a lot of the stuff that's out there right now is talking about how kids eat way too much, right? Snacks. Oh, I totally They don't eat their so. meals. Yeah. Um, if you do do, lots of the strategies that I have around eating snacks is only having healthy snacks available. Yeah. Right? So, in our fridge having the vegetables washed or having the fruit right. like and this is crazy it's so true so if i go to costco and i buy the big thing of strawberries yep. big things of raspberries if i take the strawberries and i get home from groceries and i just put the strawberries in the fridge yeah they don't get eaten yeah but if i take the strawberries wash them yeah and leave them out because on the counter right. or in a bowl in a that bowl. day they're gone by the end of the day i know right so they and it's just interesting because like it's they love strawberries, yes. but they will eat them when they're washed and out, but not so much when they're in the right because they don't want to do the washing and the cutting. Right. Or yeah. Whatever. So the more you can prep food and the more you can yeah. have it um, easily available and ready for them, I think that that's a bonus. Yeah. Right. And that's helpful. Same with oranges. Um, when I have we eat a lot of oranges in our house. I don't really? know why Mandarin oranges. So um, I buy the big bags, yeah. two bags actually for the six four of them. Yeah. Um, and I have a fruit container on the on the kitchen table yeah and I put the oranges in there okay. and they're gone but if I, they were in the fridge they wouldn't be touched. they wouldn't be eating them yeah I agree yeah I so agree. same with I can think of things like if your kids like almonds or like a trail mix right yeah. if you put almonds and raisins in a little baggies yeah. and you prep them and you left them yes out that's a good idea they might the eat those yeah. yeah like yeah. the yogurt tube's easy right but yes. actually getting a yeah. yeah, and then I stopped buying stuff like that a little bit when it became a problem. Mm. Like my daughter drank a lot of milk, yes. and then I just stopped. I just stopped buying milk, and then she <laughs> stopped drinking milk. Same with like the apple juice you were talking about. If your kids are big on juice, yeah, I, I mean we have to take responsibility. Like it's because well, we there's it. two of us in the family, right? So you have to get your husband on board. I think is what <laughs> she's trying to say, right? So that you all you are on the same page in regards yeah. to these things. But it is true that. If you and your spouse or partner have different opinions on behavior or consequences or what's acceptable, you don't necessarily need to be on the same page because they will yeah. learn that mom has these rules and dad has these rules and you can still have them treat you mm -hmm. in a different way than they treat their your spouse. Like it does happen. They yeah. will learn how you can be treated and what rules you have around things when mom is in charge and mom is yeah. home. And then they might get away with some of the stuff. It's like me with my grandparent with the grandmas, right? Oh, like yeah. when they go to grandma's house, when they were little, um, grandma loves candy and chocolate oh, and treats. And so when my little ones were like, when my kids were little, little, she helped with childcare. So they would go over there and they would eat and so junk and all kinds of stuff. And you think she would have hidden it from them so she, it would be for her? No, because she doesn't really eat it. Oh. She's not really, she just, oh, she's, she's a grandma. It. She's right. just her whole life, like to her sons and like so to my husband and stuff. Like they just always had treats and sweets yep. and stuff in the house. I don't think she is the one who eats it very oh, often. Okay. Um, so the kids get it at Oma's house. Yeah. And what I learned was just, I had to for my own sanity, is like what happens at Oma House stays at Oma's house. Right. And I don't want to know. Right. Because it was a portion of their life, but if I, there was no way I was going to be able to control that or yeah. have any kind of good relationship with my mother-in-law if I worried about all of that. Right. And you needed her help. Right. And so that's the marriage tip there, right? For moms that have mother-in-laws that they're working through and dealing with. Um, 
That was polite. Yeah. One You've of, not had very many problems. No, but that what like that because I'm a bit of a control freak. So yesterday I talked to no, maybe that wasn't on the video. That's I'm gonna talk about that this week. Is some of these behaviors that we have with our children, misbehaviors, problems that we're having with our kids, ultimately come because of things that we Absolutely. are doing and our uh -huh. own personality traits. And some of the things we do that can trigger our kids. Yeah. And I was having this discussion with one of the moms yesterday um, through uh, one of my messenger apps. And I was saying, like, for myself, I know that one of the things, I mean, even in my relationship as my marriage, like, relationships are relationships. You're really Parenting is a relationship with your children. Yeah. Marriage is a relationship with your spouse. You have relationships with your friends. Like, they're all the, kind of the same yeah. principles. And so I know that control is one of my personality traits. I like to be in control. So when the kids were little, I made my mother-in-law and my mm -hmm. mother with my firstborn when I went back to work when she was nine months old, I made my mother-in-law and mother keep a day journal of when they ate, when they pooped, when they slept, when like everything. So that when I came home from work as a teacher, I came home at 4 PM or whatever, I would know what, what they happens. were doing and all of that. And that was, you know, I wouldn't let my husband do things because I was a control yeah. freak. And then that you know, can cause problems. So now as they're teenagers, yes. that is, I'm much more self-reflective now in my forties than I was in my twenties for sure. But I have to keep that in check that why are they rebelling or why are they talking back or why are they pushing the boundaries? Our kids are our best and our worst traits. Right. They are. For absolutely. Sure. Right. I, see it all see, I do. Right. <laughs> I feel like I'm enough. I can self-reflect enough to see the things in them. And so then, or if my husband, like, right? What, what, I can pick apart what it is between the two of us. Yeah, and so it depends. Then goes to the point of does it bother you enough to f change? Right, right. And so if you're having a house where you're yelling all the time, or you're going to bed upset that maybe you overreacted or something happened, then it's worth going and looking at those things, right? What can you do yeah. around that? Yeah, I've been there, done that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't feel that way anymore. Well, that's good. For the most part. Like, <laughs> there was a period of time where I was yelling a lot. And then I, yeah, now I don't. So Right, and you can look back on those times of when you were yelling that... When my baby was crying for 18 months, yeah. Right, but you even reflect back on that about it wasn't so much that you're... Like, again, ultimately it fell on you being stressed yep. and tense. Yeah, it was my fault. And that that, yes. that aura or vibe or whatever you had was were kind of reflected on your child, yes. right? Like, because... That what I talked to yesterday about the two things that all humans need, right? Attention and power. Mm -hmm. That that was part of it. Absolutely. And I talked about, I talked quite a bit about attention yesterday on my mm -hmm. daily videos. The power one is the second piece, which is um, I don't mean like they need power. I mean no. they need power in their day, like on a daily basis. Even when they're three, do they feel like they have an appropriate amount of positive control of things in their life? So regards to getting dressed in the morning or what they wear, do are you the mom who lays out, you pick the t-shirt, you pick the pants, you pick the underwear, you pick the socks, and you lay it out for your child? Because I think there's lots of moms who do that. They want a beautiful ensemble of what the children wear. Well, my kids are lucky if their clothes are clean. Right. <laughs> okay, right. So, yeah. right. But there are moms who yes. I know have done that. Yeah. I... I can think of one who did that pretty long while the child was still, you know, up going to school yeah. um, or not approving of what they were wearing or making them get changed. And then that's a power struggle, right? Because yeah. you're not giving your child the fundamental ability just to make a choice of what they wear that day. Yeah. And so that would be one of the ones around getting dressed. Right. Um, I'm not sure someone, that was one of the things that people said they have trouble getting their child dressed because they don't want to get dressed that's why i don't know so i'm not okay. sure what the specific uh, thing was nate in a nutshell every day he doesn't want to get dressed and every day he wants popcorn for breakfast right and like he's fully capable of getting himself dressed but he doesn't want to right. so that turns into a fight and then he wants like can i have a freezy for breakfast no you cannot have a freezy for breakfast because right like that's not an appropriate right I say appropriate but like so like that is like we will fight over that because oh. he is like, he will break down. I don't want this. He's crazy. And then do you give in? No. Okay. Not and for so, those kind of things. Right. Okay. And so. But I'll drag him to get dressed. Okay. Well, so going back to the food <laughs> piece in regards to the consequence or the rules, right? Yeah. So in the moment, mm -hmm. 
you can't have you have to find a time with him outside yeah. of that again he's old enough to have these conversations yes. now he's six yeah. um is to sit down and say hey nate um i've noticed that you know in the morning you're asking for you know foods that don't not, count as breakfast yeah. foods can we you know we're gonna like i want you like i would even say like can you give me three breakfast foods mm -hmm. that are acceptable for you to eat for breakfast right and get him to agree on what those breakfast foods are yeah um and that you will agree to buy them like yeah. you got to make some concessions there like you'll have these foods in the house and then the consequence language is about you know okay so if i can't um i've noticed that you're da, 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 yeah. whatever um in our house those are not, you know, a freezy popcorn are not acceptable breakfast uh, meals. And I need you not to ask me for those anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are, then you are, right, like, so, like, then you're choosing, like, so I would say then you're choosing not to be, you can have a freezy or popcorn at nighttime, or yeah. you can have a freezy when you get home from school. Yeah. Like, making the deal. Right. And so if you ask me for that freezy for breakfast, you don't get it and you are not going to get that freezy. For that that after school right and it's your and then you have to get the child to repeat back to you so what is the rule and they have to say yeah. and so if you choose and then it's important the language is now if you choose, choose. to ask me for that freezy in the morning yeah. for breakfast then you're choosing not to get I'm not gonna give you the freezy for breakfast yeah and you're not gonna get the freezy after school I use that tactic for something else but I didn't think to do it for food right and like these you can't come up with this like in the moment right like <laughs> The fact that you just did, I was pretty impressed. Well, no, 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 I mean, but I'm not in the moment with my child yelling and screaming at me, right? right. Like, that's what I mean. So, like, you can't have that conversation in the moment when he's saying, I want my fizzy. Yeah. So, you have to pre, like, you have to pre-phrase these rules and how it works in your family yeah. outside of the moment. Because in the moment when you're angry, he's angry. It's not going to happen. Right. And what I'm going to talk about today on the video is the difference between discipline and punishment. And that discipline, ultimately, is you as a parent teaching your children lessons right. on how to live and how to live in your house yeah. and all of that punishment is something that shame blames or causes pain and we want to avoid punishment with our kids under all possibilities because punishment is not a sustainable thing like Absolutely. why do you want to cause shame on your child blame them or pain I would think most parents would agree that those that. are not three things that we want to do with our children right. so you're basically saying everything that happens is a lesson to be learned yeah, but you have to set them up for yes. it too, right? Like you have, it's a house, you have rules. They have to yeah. follow those rules. And so, yeah, like with that freezy thing, I had to think of that kind of off the top of my yes, head. So I, I was kind of trying to figure it out. Right. Like it's something he gets to have, yeah. but he doesn't get to have it if there's a problem in the morning, yeah. right? So that's a consequence yeah. of how you could do something like that. Right. The getting dress thing is a little bit different um, because he doesn't want to get dressed because he doesn't want to go to school. Or um, does he yeah. realize he has to go to school? Yeah, he doesn't want to go to school. But once he's there, he's fine. It's just like, in the moment, he wants to stay with me 24 hours a day. Right. I love you, mommy. I just want to be with you, mommy. I don't want to leave you, mommy. Mm -hmm. Go to school, kid. <laughs> and so, um, the last two, yesterday was a bit of a fight. Today, he went after like the, I asked him twice. And then I said, come on, like, I made it. A game and so he then went and ran to his room and but he doesn't want to get himself dressed he wants me to help him because he wants me to touch him and like right and, and so then then that's the piece off the top of my head yeah. is talking is how can you um, encourage get him to want to be a big boy right yeah. so within yeah. the day so not again not necessarily in that moment no. because the moment of the conflict that you're having with your child is not no, where you're not gonna, gonna listen. right you're not gonna be able to teach them or set any rules or anything like that right you gotta stay yeah. unemotional but so if you if you can pre have the consequences then you just follow the consequence right. right and it's unemotional but when you get angry and you haven't you don't have a plan yeah. that's when you're like i don't know what to do yeah. ah! and it's <laughs> like you can't you don't know what to do yeah so in regards to the getting Dress. There's a bigger issue there, which is what you're saying. He wants to be mommy's little boy and yeah. all of that. And so, are there ways that you can be encouraging him, and he sees a benefit for being a big boy yeah, and being I a benefit for a doing things? Okay. But again, that's just more work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, 
Mm -hmm. With one of my kids, everything was a race. Right. Like, I literally said, how quickly, because he was really, I have one child who's a super competitive kid. He wants to be the best at everything and the fastest at everything. Yeah. And so, one of my parenting strategies at a young age was, I timed him. Like, how quickly can you get dressed today? I'm going to time you. And I would, like, take my phone, I guess, or yeah. watch, whatever I had at the time. I mean, this was a while ago. Um, and I would time how quickly it would right. take him to do something. And then he, that worked for him because that was something that he liked to do. Yeah. So again, you have to figure out what motivates your child mm -hmm. um, and work towards finding strategies and things in your house that work that. The biggest thing I remember learning when Elizabeth, which is my oldest, was young, was just everything just takes extra long. And so that was really, really hard. But building in that extra time just so... You didn't be, you didn't have to be so stressed at yeah. the time. Like I get that they never want to get dressed. That doesn't really work. But if they're just, if you know things are gonna be slow, yeah. giving yourself waking up early. And so that was hard for me because I am a last minute person. Like I wanted to sleep in as long as I could. I wanted to just like run out the door. Yeah. And so with a couple of my children, that worked. But with my third, that did not work. He needed time. He yeah. needs to sit. He needs to do this. He needs to do this. Everything took time. And so I had to learn to wake him up earlier to yeah. start his process of getting ready in the morning and getting out the door way before my other children yeah. who were much more adaptable and easy to go on the fly. Right. And so that was a lesson I had to learn yeah. with him as well. Like just walking home from the community center, right? Like, yeah. All that, like I had to build in that time and just kind of see the world from their perspective. Right? Yeah, that I think I've just gotten used to like things have become fairly easy with the kids, and so I've gotten to I've been able to stay sleep in a little bit longer because I'm a bit of a night owl, and um, and so he wasn't always that way, just kind of in the last little bit. So thinking that it's going to take more of my time, I just have to get back onto that because I've kind of taken given given away my time or the opposite like I didn't have to do that for a while so now I just know that I need to mm -hmm. and then the attention this is just a lot this, of attention right but my attention the like give the attention when he's doing the things that he is doing on his own yeah right so like over like celebrate mm -hmm. oh my god you just put your shoes and socks on Nate you're fantastic come here give me a big hug and a kiss <laughs> ah! and throw them on the ground and roll them and tickle them and like be because he likes physical yes. stuff right yes. oh you're the best like I love that thank you so much mommy appreciates that so much Nate yeah you're fantastic like in those moments like go overboard yeah. with the attention mm -hmm. and then work on pulling back the attention when he's doing the negative behaviors yeah. would be my other strategy yeah oh my gosh okay well that's our half hour so yeah, we gotta wrap this up we got meetings and we all work we got other work to do <laughs> real work not the fun stuff here yeah. on lazy parenting um, I hope you found some of those things uh, beneficial and helped you out and I'm gonna share tips on my Instagram story today yeah all day about punishment consequences ideas around that um so come back and join us I don't know when we're gonna be back on live again next Tuesday yeah maybe on Thursday we'll see this no. Thursday yeah no oh, okay. in. oh okay. no that's fine I just meant like next Thursday I'll no Tuesday Tuesdays every morning 10 a.m. every week I mean <laughs> sounds good all right okay. see you later bye